Week nine is upon us, and it is not it is not the sexy week. It's not the one that you look and go, oh my God, Ohio State and Penn State and you know um, USC and in and Utah and like all these big time matchups that were across the board. There's going to be some dark horse upsets this week. The ones that you don't see coming wake like, forest over Florida state uh, that honestly wake forest has won that game three years in a row. So I don't think that's as much as people may think that wake forest won three years in a row. And I believe like five of the last eight. So, you know, I don't know how much of a, like, you know, Florida state, they still have a, a gigantic advantage in that series, but it's, they're no longer, Wake Forest used to be the game like, all right, well, the backup quarterback can play in the third quarter. Not anymore. And it's Wake, Wake is a weird place to play that game they're going to get up for. So, no, I'm taking it very seriously. And I'm sure Mike Norvell is considering he's never beaten Wake Forest. He does not know what it's like to wake up on a Sunday morning after a game against Wake Forest and go, okay, guys, moving on to the next one. We did great. Awesome work. Doesn't know it. Does not know it at all. Uh, so he would do that. I would think Oklahoma, Kansas would be an interesting one. Um, you know, if Oklahoma is is still trying to, you know, get over there, whatever happened last week. But I agree with what Craig said yesterday. If I'm Kansas, I'm a little bummed out that UCF put a charge into them in Norman last week, and they're coming to our place to try to to show the world that, yes, we really are the number six team in the country. We believe that we're better than the number six team in the country. We are we are charging ahead to the college football playoff, and the Jayhawks are the next team in the way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just UCF, I don't think anyone expected that, and so Kansas fans are probably teeing up like, hey, we're going to be a team that's going to going to be the first one to really show them, hey, they can't just walk through all of us uh, here yeah. in the Big 12. But now there's there's no Jalen Daniels. You're yeah. still with Jason Bean. Uh, the game, it's going to be one of the bigger games in Lawrence in the last forever. But I just I'm not liking their odds now that they're on a backup quarterback and and OU has had that scare put into them already. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So uh, Paxton says, can Oklahoma run the ball? That's a good question. They need they're going to need to run the ball consistently um, if they're going to beat. You know, the team, look, if they're going to beat Oklahoma State, I think I'd probably have to run the ball consistently because Oklahoma State is. Like, they're going to run it at you with Ollie Gordon. So when Bedlam comes up here soon, and the last Bedlam, which I would have said all deals were going to be off if Mike Gundy, who has, like, seemingly moved on from that, but if Mike Gundy was having a rough year and, like, they needed that, like, shot in the arm of, like, listen, guys, this could be, like, we can turn it all around for the home stretch, but they've already turned it all around at Oklahoma state. They're doing really well, but that game in a couple weeks is going to be, it's going to be some serious bad blood uh, because it is, it is the uh, like, it may not be the last bedlam, but it's going to be the last bedlam that we know about for a long time, you know, and there's no urgency to schedule it from either side. So yeah, I, like they're going to have to learn to run the ball and we'll see. Uh, I would think that they could run the ball in Kansas's defense, which is not spectacular and not uh, mauling people up front. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I'm, when I'm looking at that Bedlam game or just Oklahoma State as a whole this year, I'm thinking that might be one of the turnarounds of the year, mm -hmm. frankly. Yeah, I mean, you go from getting drilled against South Alabama, where Ollie Gordon only had three carries in that game, by the way. Uh, and I don't, I don't remember the circumstances, but in the first three games, he didn't have a whole lot of – you know, yeah, I think he had one good game and like two others that were not all that great. He scored a couple of touchdowns early, but he didn't have a, like a, the volume of carries. And then all of a sudden, you know, against Iowa State in a the game they lost, it kind of flipped the script and like Ollie Gordon became the center of the offense and started running everything through him. And so since that that point has has happened, it's made Alan Bowman be able to settle in a lot better and the receivers around them get a lot better. So yeah, I mean, Oklahoma State is going to run the ball at you. Um, Oklahoma should be able to stop the run. I like. I'm not afraid of Kansas's defense, but I am afraid of Kansas playing at home, wanting to, especially wanting to play spoiler, and they're still in this race. So, you know, the, like, yeah, 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 they're absolutely still in the race. I just we, we saw what happened when Kansas went down to down to Austin, yeah, and they had to start Jason Bean, yeah, a team with superior talent won, yeah, and. How do you see the the Texas defense versus the OU defense in terms in terms of talent? I think the and, OU defense is better today. 
I think the Texas defense is deeper, but they've got injuries in the secondary right now yeah. that are making it tough. So, so it sounds like it doesn't bode well for Kansas. No, exactly. Being yeah. at home helps them. Yeah. But yeah. Being at home, being big noon kickoff, although Urban Meyer went to talk to to the KU players today. I don't know how that's going to help them. But, you know, a little, little, little disappointed that that's still a, a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I would be too. I'd, I'd question how players view Urban Meyer. Yeah. Like, obviously, national championship winning head coach. But um, there's plenty of other stuff that's been out there for Here. kids to see. Here's the, here's the message from Urban Meyer. Guys. You can live a life with no consequences if you do not acknowledge you've ever done anything wrong. Honestly, <laughs> that the NCAA should think about how they're just saying that message to every kid who plays in the NCAA. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, look, it's Lance Leipold's call. You know, Urban Myers won three national titles. I get it. You know, the guy's a brilliant coach, but I just I don't understand that like, you know, your kids aren't gonna Google anything about this guy. They don't like then hear about him like literally kicking his kicker while he was stretching and yelling at him while he was on the ground. Like, I don't know the way he like treated guys in Jacksonville, the way that, I don't know. It's just, it's so, it's so bizarre to me that like, I don't know. And of course, part of that's Fox giving him a job again. You know, I don't, I don't get it. I never will. Um, but that, that's going to be the end of my, my diatribe today. Yeah. I don't know who's, uh, whose kid he has kidnapped and <laughs> is holding hostage in his basement. As far as Fox yeah. executives go, <laughs> who he's got pictures of, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, you know, like A&M in South Carolina this week, I would say would be an upset alert game for South Carolina to go beat A&M because A&M's offense has been so bad lately, but South Carolina's offensive line is, is so incredibly porous, and a and m strength on their defense is their defensive line. Now, granted, they lost Walter Nolan a couple weeks ago, but like their strength is still the front seven on defense, and I just think Spencer Rattler is going to get mauled. So there's not one I, I see happening. Um, you know, Houston and Kansas State don't really see that as an upset possibility game. Although I do think Houston has started to play better. I don't know how Houston bounces back from that Texas loss last week after they, they, they had Texas where they, they wanted them and need them to be at the end of that game, because that's how Houston was going to win is keep it close at the end and make the plays when you need to, and then get that. Um, we'll call it a questionable call. I think it was, I think it was bad, but we'll file it in the questionable category. No, it, it was wrong. It was the wrong call. Yeah. I, I don't, think there's any two ways about it personally well and it was and a here's, short spot and the spot they should have given was a first down and here's what i don't understand is like them saying they reviewed it but they clearly like why did they just stop down and get into it for a second yeah like what what like they've done in much less critical situations they also they also brought the chains out like yeah. why didn't they have time to fully review the play during the measurement process yeah and if they said they fully reviewed the play and they didn't have conclusive evidence, then I'm just back to being mad at the refs on the field for making the wrong call on the field. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's – yeah, it just – they they fast-forwarded through that one. And then to have to do that and have that disappointment and then go to a place like Kansas State, already tough to play, and Kansas State – has, after that Oklahoma State loss, rediscovered themselves in a way that it seems like they do every year where they kind of have a little dip and they have, you know, they had the Missouri loss, they lost to Oklahoma State, and everybody's like, oh, well, you know, I guess maybe they're not what we thought they were. And then Chris Kleiman, just such a brilliant coach that he and the staff go get in the lab and they're like, okay, here's what we're going to do. Oh, fixed, you know, which is why, like, those things – if you're a person who's against the 12 team playoff, those are the kind of things that the 12 team playoff is going to fix is that you have, it gives great coaching staffs. And I think Kansas state has a great coaching staff uh -huh. that Chris Kleiman had, he and his staff do great work ad adapting to losses. They've proven it over the years where they have a loss. They lost to Kansas state. He made a lot of mistakes in that game. They made a lot of mistakes in that game. He made, and I like, I don't even criticize him because I think he was trying to get a spark out of his team. And so he was taking some chances because they were really like emotionally, mentally not in the game the way that they needed to be when you go to go to Stillwater. It's a tough place to play. They berate little kids in Stillwater. I know it. 
I know there's one here who got berated in Stillwater when he was young. He's he shaking ca- his head, yes. He, yes, Emery carries that trauma with him to this day. I brought it up for the whole world to know. <laughs> Look, guys, if Emery, if Emery Winter rolls into Stillwater one day and starts throwing haymakers, you know, you, you know what you did. <laughs> he's, he's out for blood. But, he, um, but, yeah, it's a tough place to play. So they weren't ready mentally, and so he thought, all right, well, what can I do? Yes, I'm going to go for it on fourth and seven at my own, on my own 38 because – Right now, if we don't get this, it's the late third quarter. Oklahoma State's going to be, you know, they're, they're going to go score anyway. Like, that, that's what's happening. Or they're going to, even if they don't score, they're going to take six minutes off the clock because, you know, they're just, just how the game is going. So I need to somehow grab back the momentum. And then his team didn't respond. And so, yeah, it makes him look dumb. But, I like, I don't think it is that. Of Sometimes you just do things because you – You've got to, and the and the card needs to go out the window. Where it's like, look, oh yeah, you know. And sometimes you need to look at the card and go, oh yeah, the card is right. But I I think coaches honestly maybe too often keep waiting and pushing back. Like, no, I don't have to make the game like defining or deciding decision yeah. right here, right now. And they let it, they let it keep going, keep pushing back until they can't make a decision that you, that affects the game to that level. They just let the game beat them instead of trying to go win the game. Yeah. So I like I can re- I can honestly respect it. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I I I think that you know whatever that they, their staff does when you get to a twelve team playoff, there's a team like Kansas State that could finish you know eleventh or twelfth that would have been like, man, I wish we were playing this good. And guess all who the five long. seed does not want to see? Yeah, you don't want to play. You don't want to play that team. Look, um, Phil Bennett likes to talk about that 2012 Baylor team all the time when we have him on, and it's a great example. Now, they probably wouldn't have made it up to that point because they already had a few losses, but I promise you, nobody in the country wanted to play that team at the end. They might not, like, uh, especially if you were in a playoff scenario where you would have to beat them and then play somebody else a week later, yeah. <laughs> they would have worn you out because they had they were playing with a confidence and a vision like they didn't have early in the season, and all it takes is something to turn around. Look, um, part of the reason that Florida State was picked so high this year is because of the way they closed last year. Now, look, they lost three games and didn't deserve to be any kind of playoff and probably wouldn't have been, you know, had it had it been the case even a year ago. But if you took it, like, just say you take away one of the close losses they had to Wake Forest or, or NC State, you take away one of those, and they're 11-2 and two or 10-2 and two instead of – of nine and three rolling in there. Do you want to play Florida state 12th at the end of the year? Do you want to like, say, say Tennessee gets hot again, right? Do you want to play a game like it in not, especially if it wound up being in Knoxville, you want to play a game in Knoxville when Tennessee's hot? No. Yeah. I, I think, I think it'd be, I wouldn't want to play in Manhattan in a 12 team playoff. Yeah. Not, not a chance, especially if they, they end the year, how they seemingly end most years now uh, under Chris Kleiman. Um, of course, the big story in the 